All right, folks, in this one, we're going to be covering a uh, narrowband O2 simulation, how to set that up, and what you're doing with it. Um, and of course, in this one, we're going to kind of go over two tabs only because two tabs has to be uh, messed with to be able to uh, deal with this one tab. So basically, we're going to be messing with the narrowband O2 simulation on this one. And lastly, we're going to be, or, or, or the next one we're going to be messing with is the ECU inputs tab because we have to set this one up to be able to use uh, the narrowband O2 simulation. So basically, and this one right here, now of course, without being connected to the ECU over here, um, it, we can't do these drop down tabs over here. You have to be connected to the ECU to be able to do this. But in this instance, we're gonna say we've already set everything up, which I have uh, for this instance. Basically, we, I'm using a uh, Innovate LC1 wideband and uh, I already have it set up as my rear two rear O2 uh, parameter here or the input and I also have it down here for wideband if you notice it says use for narrow band simulation only it's the only reason why you need to mess with this otherwise you're really not even needing to mess with this section right here this is the only purpose of this is for the narrow band simulation okay so basically we're just selecting which input we're using it for so it knows where to look for the wideband to use it for a simulation. So in this instance we're using it for the rear O2. We're setting it up up here so this is where we're going to be displaying it for data logging purposes um, so that we can see that in our logs. Okay, I don't necessarily have to put it there but if we want to log it that's definitely helpful to use it. Okay, so we're going to go over, we're, Saying we have everything set up here, we're done with this tab because we now have it set up. And we go to narrowband O2 simulation. Pretty self-explanatory. You want narrowband O2 simulation? Click narrowband, uh, enable narrowband simulation. Okay. Uh, now the wideband switch point. Uh, this point right here is basically easy to set up. Basically what we would do, and I already have it pulled up over here. In this instance, I have raw LC1 wideband, uh, 2.5. Four three volts. Okay, and let me show you real quick. I'm going to pull up my displayed values here. Uh, basically, pull that up. Click raw value, and we're looking for the parameter that has our wideband in it. Okay, we're assuming we already have it displayed in our log, and now we're looking for the one that we need. And I believe I already have it set up in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove it so you know what to look for. Okay, now, let's see, let me hit OK to make sure it's removed. Go back in there, click raw value. Now we can go in there and look for it. That's going to be the one dealing with the wide band. In this instance, you see raw rear O2 volts input wide band. Hmm, I wonder which one we use. Be that one right there. Let's click OK. OK. Here we have it right here. And basically what I'm doing, I'm scrolling through my log, looking for anywhere where I'm going to have a 14.7 stoichiometric ratio. Okay, uh, so we're basically looking for 4.7. Uh, now it's going to be give or take. Right here I got 2.5, but in another section I believe it's 2.43. Yep, right here I got 14.7, 2.43. It doesn't matter if it's two, you know, hundreds off. It's not going to be that big of a deal, but we want to get it close, okay? It can throw your reading here off if you, you know, a good bit if you have it way off. So basically, whatever you're reading that you're seeing here for the raw LC1 wideband or whatever wideband it is you're using, 2.43 in this instance, that's what you throw in there. Bam, simple, okay? The only other thing is startup options, delay four. If some people I have had asked me, is there anything I can do to get my wideband to start sooner? Yes, you can delay for however many seconds here. This is a section I don't really ever mess with. I leave it just as it is. The wideband has to have a certain amount of uh, warm-up time, or the sensor has to have a certain amount of uh, warm-up time before it's going to start. Same as the Stock O2 sensor. You want it to be able to warm up. Uh, but in certain instances, you may want to change this either sooner or later. Um, so you have the option to delay for however many seconds here before it starts. I just leave it at 15 seconds, okay? Uh, normally when you start the car up, it's going to be an open loop anyway. 
Uh, it's not going to go in a closed loop right away, so it's really, you know, it's not going to hurt anything to leave it at 15 seconds, but some people are having problems, but if they're having problems with their car, you know, with their wideband not going uh, to start sooner, then you may have other issues that you need to be worried about, okay? Uh, and it also is not going to go into narrowband simulation until the wideband is not equal to, say, zero volts for both of these, the plus or minus zero volts. So... It has to be equal to anything other than what is in here before it will start, okay? So it would have to be at least 0 0.01 or anything higher than zero volts before it will work, okay? I've never really messed with it at all. I've never re really needed a reason to, but if there's any reason whatsoever that you want it to start outside of this zero volts, that's where you put that in there. Uh, that basically covers up how, or covers how to use narrowband O2 simulation. The reasons why or why you wouldn't, we'll cover that later, but this is just basically setting up the tab, and I'll go over that later. All right, bye.